the conformers. That means they can still hear the native sounds, such as the rocks being dropped into a metal bucket. You'll always hear that. And they can understand the reptilians, uh, their native sounds, their gurgling and uh, whatever noises come out, but they can understand it. Through the modification. Okay. So they're, they're hearing senses. Your hearing senses, after you've been modified, your hearing senses don't get shut off. You'll still hear yeah. the, their native sound, but in your head, you'll understand what they're saying. The modifications are not our technology. Yeah. It's not yeah. our technology. Okay, yeah. It's their technology. Okay, but what is the relationship between the reptilians and humans? We don't know from what we uh, have gleaned from our source. Um, we think, and this is our, I'm going to say we're going to put our military hat on as a source, we think this is a rescued species from maybe a dying planet, maybe an extinction level event or something. And they had been with the conformers for a very long time. Are the reptilians shapeshifters themselves? No. There's no indication from our guy that he witnessed any uh, metal or physical shapeshifting of these reptilians. Why do you have the idea that the tall whites are somehow involved? And if so, how that's, are they involved? That's an interesting thing because the first, the first interaction our guy had was with a tall white. And he had another interaction years ago, and I can't get into the specifics of it because I don't know what I can say, what I can't say on this because I haven't you know, been given the permission to do so. But I can talk in, in generalities. He did interact with a tall white uh, 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 subsequently to his initial interaction, and they, um, they basically gave him some advice, which he knew nothing about, and then eventually it subsequently came true. Let's clarify. Our source had an interac interaction with the tall white at the Area 51 facility. Did right? he know Charles and Hall? He had, one, he, had one, he had one later, much later in his life in that we don't we want to be very careful because our source is, is not sure what happened, but he's 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 reasonably sure it was the same tall white that he had met at the uh, fifty one facility. And but what is he, interesting? Did he meet him through Charles Hall? No, no. Okay. But shown a picture from Charles Hall's book, he said, "Yep, that's it." He said there's certain subtle differences that he would, but he said, yeah, essentially that was it. Okay, so he had an interaction with the tall white, and what did the mm -hmm. tall white tell him that subsequently later come, came true? He gave him advice about an upcoming uh, opportunity, and they suggested he should take it, and he didn't know anything about it, and subsequently that opportunity came up. On the predictability end of things, the advice, this is where you know it lends credence to the, the episode that he experienced, that... They said something was going to happen. They advised him to, to do something, and then subsequently he was approached about the very nature from a human standpoint, and he took the advice. It had something to do with his career. Right. I see. So was it sort of a separate event? Yeah, this was uh, separate in terms of from Area 51 was completely separate. This okay. was years later. I, I, I actually approached our source and said, look, you know, do you think that they use the tall whites as an intermediary species, an easy comfortable intermediary species to another species, and he said that makes a lot of sense to him. Okay, but why were you prompted to ask that? What was the indicator that, because so far you've only talked about this, this conformer species interacting with on their ship. I'll tell you why I asked that question. Because with, with the other species, there's an acclimatization process that takes place because they're so different looking. Okay, you have to kind of pick and choose who who can handle and who can't. With the tall whites, there was no process whatsoever involved in that. You're talking about on the human side, but what I'm interested in is the relationship between the tall whites and the conformers and the reptilians. How do you know? How did your source lead you to believe that they interacted with each other in any way? I guess he's gleaning it because both of these. All the species involved are connected to his specific program. So he's, he's simultaneously, if I'm understanding you, interacting not only with the conformers and the reptilians on the ship, but he is also having some kind of interaction with at least one other species, which is the tall whites, and possibly uh, that's some a, others. That's, that's a fair statement. Okay. And what are the other species that, that he's also interacting with? 
here's the species that we know that he's talked about. Uh, incidentally, uh, the second experience of the tall white was brought up by our source to us, that we were unaware that we talked about it, and then subsequently some, some other events happened, which is interesting, but I can't, Bill and Gary, I can't get into that, because we don't know if we can say anything on that. However, he has, the first species that he's dealt with was a tall white at Area 51. The conformers, the reptilians, and we believe he caught a glimpse, he's not sure, we want to be very careful on the TDY, that there is some type of insect-like race, but he's not sure. We want to be, we, 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 he prefaced this, I'm not sure what I saw, but it was something very different. Like what? Like a praying mantis being? He didn't get into any specific, um, uh, he, his, his description was just general insectoid life. And the conformers did say to him, because they realized that our source caught a glimpse of it, and he said, just ignore it. <laughs> okay, well, that's not very comforting to have an ET <laughs> <laughs> that you, yeah, that you, can't really determine all that much about who calls themselves or has been called the controllers to, in essence, give you an order to not worry about something. Well, I, I, the word controller, that's a human quality. and I don't like the word controller, and I don't like the word conformer, to be honest with well, you. Well, it, like like, it doesn't make me like them. I can certainly certainly tell you that no, much. No, but or it does, it's not palatable to me. Um, and it, it, we, there's no name for them. I, we, I, I would let's call all call them the Gumbies. I have no problem with that. Maybe that people would uh, be more receptive to the information. Yeah, we but, don't know what to call them. Okay, Carrie. but there's an, but, but there's an inference. There's not. There's some reason why you guys or your your source, and you know, you can tell me the source of where this came from. But they've they've been assigned a name that you're generally using in public which is called the conformers or the controllers, Correct. right? Conformers. So there, I wouldn't name something with, unless I had a purpose behind the name. It indicates not just that there might be a hierarchy within the, the races they're dealing with, but it actually has a bit of an... I don't, have you read Arthur C. Clarke, Childhood's End? Sure, I, I'm familiar with the book. No, I'm not read it. Okay. Well, I, I highly, highly oh. recommend it, considering the line of work you're in at the moment. Um, but at any rate, what it what it has it has um, you know sort of a uh, a bit of a sinister aspect. And what exactly was meant by giving them that title? Well, I mean, again, we we, we get back to the original impetus um, of giving the title is that we, we we they noticed that other ET races tended to defer to them or conform to them. Tend, you know, this is just observation. We don't know for a fact. And two, they have the ability to elongate and, and, and flatten out and to kind of conform to their physical needs in terms of uh, size and shape. But they don't change the necessary, they don't change the, uh, their, their essence has not changed. What it changed is their ability to like extend 10 feet or go wide 10 feet. So they kind of can conform to their physical uh, demands what they physically need to do, so that was that was kind of the uh, the the that was the motivation for, for for using that word, and that's not a word that we came up with. It's a word that I guess the working group came yeah. up with. Okay. What you're talking about is a physical conformity. You're not talking about social conformity. Yeah, that kind of thing. Okay, but you did also call them the controllers. This is their alternate name. That, that was the, originally what they came up with was control only because of the deference issue, but they realized that was not accurate. So they said, you know, we came back and we talked about it, and he said, really, it's a conforming aspect of it. So we, as we just explained, okay. um, I think, I think, and I think, Terry, you bring up some excellent points. Um, one thing that we, we don't know a lot about them, they're quote unquote very tight lipped, um, not literally, but you know, figuratively, they don't, they don't really say that much. They don't offer much information. And this is presumably part of the problem that we started talking about even right at the very start of this conversation, which is how do people really know what the agenda is? How can we translate that into human terms? And if the people who are managing a disclosure program are gearing themselves up to answer a billion questions from seven billion people, then how do they come up with those answers? And how much trust are they going to get from the people who, put, who elected them into office when they say, you know what, I'm afraid I can't answer that question because we just don't know. That's not very 
encouraging, is it? And, and presumably there must be a huge number of questions being debated because I'm thinking, and I'm sure Kerry's thinking, it's like, my God, even the people who are listening to Project Camelot for two or three years are going to have some trouble with some of this material. How about oh, the people who go to work every day? You know, well, I, I mean, this is very hard to sell on the White House lawn, isn't it? Well, he, what I meant to, earlier in the interview, and just to try to narrow this a little bit, when I said it all come out, I mean all the questions are going to come out. <laughs> that, that's the point here. Disclosure, guys, uh, first of all, and I think Robert Dean is right, disclosure is only, only going to happen if contact is imminent. The powers that be are not going to release this information unless they're forced to release it. So the question is, who's forcing them? What will cause the powers to be to release the information? Because what we're dealing with and what we've just talked about has been so derided by the UFO community because we're introducing a new species. Believe me, I wish, I wish they were grays. I wish they were <laughs> tall whites because we're introducing a hot rock, guys. That's incredibly intelligent, that nothing, there's nothing in the historical evidence that has any information on this. And the only reason my brother and I are reporting this is because someone wears a uniform. We've gotten to know him. We trust him. He hasn't lied to us. He's been vetted by more than one researcher. There's like two or three others that have met him that said, wow, I mean, yeah, I mean, this, uh, hey, I don't know about a story, but I know the guy's not lying. There's been physical evidence in terms of the scars that he's uh, that he has. I've, we've learned things about the team members. There's so so much of this that says, okay, we got a pattern here. Mm. Okay, right. But, and we're, 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 you know, in terms of dates and all this, uh, of course, you know, the dates always give us Audrey. This is the 2017 date. You're offering ever ever offering a date up, you will give you Audrey. But that being said, you know, the dates the, the dates are there, and we're in a process. What um, dates are where? Continual process of examining uh, the validity of the story. I'm sorry, what dates are where? What are you referring to? The 2017 date that was uh, offered up by um, the working group and our guy and, and other people uh, connected to the program, that 2017 will oh. be a contact date. Oh, okay. Hmm. This is... Okay, now let's... Let's get down to which this gives situation. me Archita because I hate you. I don't like you. I don't like predicting days, guys. Okay, well, yeah. First of all, let me start it at the beginning here. I, I have a series of questions that I think are rather important. So, okay, what we have here is as Camelot. You, you. I don't know. You know, you've you've watched our videos. We have a number of whistleblowers coming to us with insider information, talking mm -hmm. about even Bob Dean, as you mentioned, that that we have. Basically, E.T. off-planet races that look humanoid walking the halls of the Pentagon, okay? And that there are, he is not the only person saying this. And on top of that, we've got an, an insider saying that Obama's going on television. If you believe that some form of contact is slated for 2017, then you obviously have not heard what we have heard, right, about the the twenty seventh of, of of this month, right? You haven't heard that, I assume. Not from our source, no. No. Have you heard okay. of that out in the grapevine aside from your source? Oh, hold on one second, guys. I want to ask Sean one question. All right. Um, this is what I just to answer your question on that. I don't know about that, uh, Carrie and Bill, about Obama and this, but I do know this: efforts have been made to contact Obama face to face. Okay, and you're not talking. That. You're not talking about the Stephen Greer efforts, right? Um, I'm no. not talking about that. No. Okay, great. No. So you're saying okay. that Source A has told you that his group has made, made efforts to contact him. No, we're not going to say that. No, we're not going to say that. We're just, we're just going to simply say that efforts have been made to contact Obama. Okay, right. let's really drill down here because, you know, and I, I don't mean to be, you know, I'm not trying to insult you in any way because I really appreciate what you're trying to do here. But 
I'm, I'm trying to make logical sense out of what we already know. We've been tapped into by people all over the, you know, intel agencies in the country and so on and so forth. And what you're saying is already out on the, you know, is out, already out in public. So in essence, there's no secret to Obama or anyone else in the 